Maputaland, situated in the northeastern corner of South Africa. The economic hub of this area is the bustling town of Manguzi, which lies close to the Mozambican border. The town is frequented by both locals and Mozambicans, who come to buy and sell basic goods and supplies. Despite the hustle and bustle of the town, Maputa land is crushingly poor and there are very few formal job opportunities. While women remain at home and work the fields, men often leave to seek employment in the bigger cities or industrial areas. The surrounding area is strikingly beautiful. The Cozy Bay Lake System, a World Heritage Site, consists of four lakes and a series of interconnecting channels which flow into the Indian Ocean. To catch fish, the local people use an ingenious system of fish crawls. These have been passed down from father to son over generations. Despite being an environmentally sound means of catching fish, this age-old tradition is dying out. The young men who leave their communities no longer follow in their father's footsteps and many of the kraals lie abandoned. Adventure tourists arrive in 4x4s to enjoy camping, fishing, wildlife and the remote pristine lakes of Cozy Bay. Considerable tourist potential exists, but this has little economic impact for the majority of local people in this area. And how many did you sell today? Well, today I sold one, only one. Over half of the population have no formal schooling. A mere 9% have matriculated from high school. This, combined with limited job opportunities, mean that many families are living below the breadline. Women and children spend many hours each day fetching water from boreholes or rivers. There is no electricity, but plentiful supplies of firewood. The soil is very sandy, and only subsistence crops are grown particularly groundnuts. In the wetter areas, cassava is farmed and vegetables such as pumpkin will be planted at homesteads. Livestock, mainly cattle and goats, will be kept to sustain families. Any opportunity to create an additional income stream is welcome. Bees and honey have always formed an important part of the indigenous knowledge of the Zulu people in this area. Manguzi resident Sam keeps bees at his homestead. So Sam, what are you using here to catch for bees? It's an old wheelbarrow, is it? Old wheelbarrow, yes. I leave them for two years because I'm not on rush. I want to have plenty of honey. I uh, just used to collect all the old drums or old pots mm -hmm. that is not used. Uh, as long as it's got some uh, small hole mm -hmm. inside or you just uh, make your own small hole. Sam's neighbor Mandla also keeps bees. A fever, okay. Yeah, so we eat uh, honey. 
with hot water. Yeah, and uh, we use the uh, Zulu medicine we mm. mix with uh, other some uh, other other things for the for it is for our culture actually. We use honey mixing with other stuff, but the Sangoma used to take it. Maputa land's socio-economic challenges, combined with ideal ecological factors and the natural inclination of the local community to keep bees led government to earmark the area for a pilot beekeeping project. In 2007, the Bee Foundation was contracted to implement an expensive project in the area. Unfortunately, after only one year, this overly ambitious project was abandoned. In 2009, the Department of Economic Development moved in to salvage and restart the initiative. Mrs. Busi Tembe is the project coordinator. It started in the, in the area uh, from B Foundation. Mm -hmm. And then B Foundation became a failure. And uh, after that, the Department of Economic Development had to take step in uh, introducing the pilot project. Because as it is now, we are a pilot project. A hundred people were selected representing each of the 11 wards in the area and were allocated 10 hives each. Some chose to work in groups and form cooperatives, others work alone. Russell Tembe is the community facilitator. So my role in the project one was to make sure that uh, the information gets to, to the community. Secondly, to make sure that we set up a criteria to identify the, pro, the, 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 beneficiary, the beneficiaries. I think this project is one way of many attempts in terms of assisting the community to, to earn some salaries. For the project to flourish, ongoing support and further transfer of skills to the aspiring beekeepers would be essential. William Urquhart, a retired beekeeper, was employed on an initial 18-month contract to mentor the beekeepers and visit them every six weeks. The department decided to, to try and create something um, out of the disaster that, that had been there and um, uh, based on a thousand hives. And they had already identified people and they formed a, a local co-ops and, and an umbrella co-op and a total of a hundred people with uh, roughly ten hives each. Um, so that's where it started and then um, uh, Tati Kladi from the Department of Economic Development um, knew me from the Department of Agriculture where he was uh, an economist before he joined the Department of Economic Development and I had been running the, uh, the beekeeping course at Sadara so he said wouldn't I like to be the mentor. Organised beekeeping has been taking place in South Africa since the 1800s. It was linked to the emerging fruit industry in the Western Cape and commercial forestry ventures. Honey bees occur naturally in South Africa. There is a plentiful supply of pollen for much of the year and wild swarms can be captured easily. South Africa's bees, although not untouched by bee diseases, are still predominantly healthy. However, despite this, South Africa remains a honey importer and it is estimated that the current commercial honey producing industry could expand to twice or three times its current size. The community of Maputa land falls under the chiefdom of Nkosi Tembe. It was our concept and then it was accepted at the provincial level that uh, yes, we can uh, actually do the research in terms of the bee uh, farming. Unfortunately, we got uh, two seasons. We got uh, the winter season and we got uh, the summer season. So it actually that gave us a very good opportunity to, to be in a position to, uh, to be identified as a, a potential area in terms of the bee farm. There are a lot of natural vegetation uh, which uh, we have seen um, produces flowers and are good for bees and, and they know bees in that area, that they are used to honey which means that it is part of their culture to work with bees. Uh, the, the, the new plantings of, 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 the, of the gum trees 
it gives the alternative for a second honey flow, so the summer honey flow from the natural vegetation and the winter honey flow in about um, May uh, from the gum trees. Temba lives at Mashabane, a remote area far from Manguzi. He and his wife Pumzile are both enthusiastic beekeepers. His bees source food entirely from the surrounding indigenous bush, as there are no eucalyptus plantations nearby. Temba uses standard beehives, but alongside these, he makes use of indigenous hives made out of hollow trees. Smoke is used to make the bees docile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, no, I'm going to keep it. What am I keeping? I'm keeping it for the way that you put it. Sick, just keep it. Zonk. Zonk. Yeah. Okay. Temba also uses indigenous methods to catch swarms. Yeah. It's a catch box. I think for the latin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, for the latin, you will have to take a look for the latin. Yeah, for the latin. Pewile and her brother Sipo keep bees at their homestead at Makanya. All their hives have bees and the swarms are thriving. Nandy. <laughs> 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 this now, feel that. Just, it's, 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 it's full of honey. Yeah. And on both sides, it's absolutely full of honey. So that means that there is no room at all for the queen to lay. Once among figure like Kaya, among figure like Kaya, two thousand eight, December twenty eight. So, I think figures if it is equal, but over like Kaya, baby, 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 Sipo sells lala palm wine. The bees also enjoy the sap of the lala palms. Okay, right. See, a she's a basically a cow. Let's change. Basically, I'm going to go go pour me juice. Yeah, I'm not mad. I'm mad in general. Basically, and you obviously I'm some sort of. In a more excellent. After a mean food. Yeah. Six ten. Tamba ama. And umalina a litre? Five, twenty-five litre. 
and he says, your day is sad. 120 rand. Uh, he no pusa. He is fazan and I'm a daughter. No, I'm a daughter. No, I'm a daughter. We should be sunk as a pusa, but we smam and we're in. And the gentlemen here, are they here to buy palm wine? Yes, this one. Yeah, yeah. Come drink now. No, no, no. Oh. Mrs. Ntuli works alone at Zebi. She'd caught many swarms over the last year and was anticipating a good harvest. However, things did not go according to plan. The ants come up the, the stems mm -hmm. and then they actually get into the boxes. And then when are they in the box, there are those that are uh, destroyed by the bees. And then they manage to stay, even if they are these big ants. But the smallest ones are the problem, because they can't uh, uh, give anything to them, because they're very, very small. Okay. And then uh, I had to clean that area, because it, it was a forest that side. Mm. So I had to clean the area. Then the moment I cleaned that area, it's when it started having this, the smallest ones okay. getting in. Then. Uh, all the 21 boxes with the, the, the hives had to, had, to, had to leave. We thought from the beginning that it might be they were leaving, the bees were, were leaving because they were running short of food. So we had to, I had to make food for, for, the, for, the, for the bees. Then despite that, they still, they still left. There's the nest, I don't know where it's gone. I didn't see it come out. Are they? No. <coughs> It's a dormouse, it's not a rat. It's indigenous. Ants are not the only unwelcome visitor to the hives. Where is it? There's one there. So oh, it's hatched out. Yeah. And here's another one here. So. However, finding a queen bee is always exciting. Persons of the various groups meet the tribal authority officers to discuss any problems members may be experiencing. This is a chance for members to share information and give each other advice. <laughs> Despite the area being suitable for beekeeping, the community faces numerous challenges. Transport is a considerable problem. The roads are predominantly unpaved and are only possible with a 4x4. Public transport is mainly limited to the tar roads and it is infrequent, uncomfortable and expensive. 
into the hampers on a lana as equal. Mamma's funeral, Tapma's funeral dropping gun. Says Sugar, so Kibala, Popu mobile. You want to put daily? You have Kibala, a pamper spirit daily, and must wait a dollar foot is a spare la pan. I'm jumping when they cross a mean with two tiny candles a beggar. Who's so Yabona Maguia and go say, Lom Sabin's law, where news. Who's on nigger man than Kutan? Who's a turning mod? Yens was a lamb, man get dropping. Hamming a yammy mod. No, my abonsi la, Jay, I'll come mod. At the month, funny got saying, I know my e crosser. There was a good thing, Lashem, mod, then yamming, driving, thing, he beg. The hives are far, and also the, 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 the owner of the transport. You see, they take that as a, a chance. If you come to them and say, please collect this high for us, you see, they charge a lot. Yeah, the transport is a big problem, especially when we come to harvest like this, as we do today. If we don't have a transport, it's too difficult to do it. Mm. But if for the transport, is it. During the winter months, intense heat and high winds bring forest fires. Towards the end of winter, a terrible fire swept through Mashabane, and although Temba managed to save most of his hives, the surrounding forest was devastated. It will be many months before it will again be a source of pollen and nectar for his bees. I've never noticed the problem of this fire, but this time I did notice and it is so hurting. I am when it was affected. Seven, six perhaps we were bent to mm. ashes with bees inside. You know, it was so terrible. I, I couldn't believe it and uh, I just thought, but how? We congenerate best seller conducts of Tenuga and Jehova Valley, Sikaso, Hulmel and Joa, and you was ten of my sis, baby, when you ten a good Mapogasali Mel, baby, went to Bazoa. An abundant honey harvest is dependent on good rain. This year the rain came late, but this did not dampen the spirit amongst the beekeepers. For most of them, this was their first harvest. Before opening the hives, the bees are smoked to make them less aggressive. <laughs> Yeah, look.
Each hive is opened and the frames are checked for honey. The full frames are then removed and taken to the central depot for extraction. This would have been very difficult if it were not for the use of William's vehicle. It's very good. Promises us that next time we'll get more than this. Members of the groups assisted daily with the extraction process. The frames of honeycomb are all uncapped. The frames are then placed in a hand extractor to remove the honey. Although the harvest was promising, it was not as big as expected, and some groups did not harvest at all. Yeah, and the issue with um with people having um not super production, so the hives weren't all ready, so the but that's what could have been more. Been We've more lost production. Zone. We definitely have lost production because uh, you know you saw yourself some of the lids. They'd already started building in the lids. Now, had, they, had we had an extra hive, an extra box on top, we would have got a lot more production. So, you know, but it's a learning process for the people, for all of us. Uh, it's a learning process. And what, is, what I can say, and I'm more fair about it, we need to put more supers on, on top. Because exactly what we, we've got today, it's because of these supers. So it means that if we put supers on top, then we will get more next time. I'm learning what kind of honey are we going to take as the time goes on maybe i'm going to harvest myself you see uh, and i'm maybe i'm going to teach the other people how to harvest gazini's harvest was surprisingly poor their hives were hidden deep in the bush safe from honey thieves this hampered the bees fly zone you learn something each and every harvest you learn something because there is something new I learned for this harvest and they, for the first time I learned something, now I learn something again okay, for another thing. So. Okay. Yeah. 
Despite these problems, a total of 142 kilograms of honey was harvested and sold wholesale to a local bottler. Um, the guy that will buy it, he expected it to all be dark honey. I think he's going to be very favourably impressed that it's mm. this light and I'm going to try and push him for a higher mm. price. And, uh, um, and then he'll bank it straight into there. At the and night. who's it going to? To Peel's? Peel's honey, yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm. yeah. Do you think it would do well? Do you think people will like the taste? Is it, is it a bit different? I would say it's a very saleable honey. That, 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 that's the bush one. I'd say it's very saleable. Uh, there. It's not, it hasn't got that powerful after bite. I want to tell my little Kala, Nakumus, with Billy, a lobola, my cotton shot. Snow Kumasi Javel is under the Snow Kubak and Utis Kubak and M. Seven Zulus sends a presumes of Fanel Masikubele Pam. I'm committed to what Mr. Williams is doing. See, I always keep my eyes open and look what is happening and what is going to happen. And even if we talk about bees, listen to the bees what they say because if they sound, they tell you something. There is something inside. Maybe there is a shortage of something. So I think if Mr. Williams take a break as Ubambiswano, we will manage the space of Mr. Williams. <laughs> it's coming inside me, yeah. <laughs> Is it painful? Yeah.